this video, I will use a few specimens to demonstrate the entire male urethra and associated structures. I will point out the location of the openings of the ejaculatory ducts and the bulbourethral glands, even though you cannot see the glands. You may have seen parts of these structures in the video on the male urogenital system. You will get an unobstructed view of the vas, seminal vesicles, and prostate in situ. Last but not least, you will follow the course of the vas deferens from its beginning to its end. We are looking at the right half of body 2, which was hemisected in the mid-sagittal plane. For orientation, note the anterior abdominal wall, the pubic symphysis, the sacrum, and the coccyx. This is the bladder. Here is the prostate, and this structure behind the prostate is the rectum. The urethra is about 18 to 20 centimeters long. It begins at the base of the bladder, passes through the prostate, the penis, and ends at the external urethral meatus. That, by the way, is its narrowest part. The urethra is divided into three parts. The first part is the prosthetic urethra and the ejaculatory ducts open here. The second part of the urethra extends from the prostate to the bulb of the penis. Since it passes through the urogenital diaphragm and the perineal membrane, it is called the membranous urethra. This is the shortest and the least dilatable part of the urethra. The third part of the urethra traverses the corpus spongiosum and is hence called the spongy or the penile urethra. Located here are the openings of the bulbourethral glands. We will now move on to body one. We are looking at the gluteal region. Note the ischial tuberosity, sacrotuberous ligament, coccyx, and the ischiopubic ramus. You can see the pelvic outlet clearly as I removed most of the pelvic diaphragm. Do you recall what forms the pelvic diaphragm? I've also removed the rectum and the anal sphincter to expose these other deeper structures. These by the way, are the inferior rectal nerves which were going to the external anal sphincter. Here's the prostate, the seminal vesicle, and the vas deferens. You can also see the bladder. It's about at this point that the vas joins with the duct of the seminal vesicle to form the ejaculatory duct which opens into the prosthetic urethra. This is the membranous urethra. We will now move on to an unplastinated specimen. This specimen was removed from an unembalmed cadaver. Note the testis, spermatic cord, the rectum, bladder, and the prostate. In the spermatic cord, I can feel this cord-like structure, which is the vas deferens. It feels cord-like because of its thick wall and narrow lumen. The vas begins at the tail of the epididymis, goes up in the spermatic cord, goes through the inguinal canal, changes direction, and goes across towards the midline. It crosses the ureter close to the base of the bladder, and then it joins with the duct of the seminal vesicle to form the ejaculatory duct opening into the prostate. As I press on the seminal vesicle 
and the prostate, you can perhaps see little fluid oozing out of the urethra. I'm reflecting the tunica vaginalis, which is remains of the peritoneum to expose the testis. This part here, thick membrane, is the tunica albuginea. This is the epididymis, which is loosely attached to the testis. Note the head, the body, and the tail of the epididymis. The tail is continuous with the vas. You can note the narrow lumen of the vas, also called the ductus deferens. This here is the, about the location of the deep inguinal ring. And at this point, there are these two vessels, you might be able to see them faintly, which join on to the vas. Can you name those vessels? Give you a hint. They traverse the inguinal canal. Those are the testicular vessels. This other structure here is the ureter. Note that the ureter as well as the vas, both are posterior to the peritoneum. I would like to show you one more specimen. This is the bladder. And here is an enlarged prostate. I section the prostate to expose the urethra. This is the urethra. And you can see these two ejaculatory ducts opening into the prosthetic urethra. This is the seminal vesicle. And here is the vas deferens. This dilated part of the vas is called the ampulla. It is here that the sperms are stored. As I press on the seminal vesicle, you may be able to see some fluid come out through these ejaculatory ducts which are cut. The openings of these ducts are located on either side of a midline swelling in the urethra. That swelling is called the colliculus. Here are a few questions for you.